All right. Welcome everyone to our virtual um, athletic series. Um, today we've got a bunch of people here to help answer some questions about Grandview Athletics and give a ton of information. Uh, my name is Tina Miranda. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions at Grandview. Um, I also work with a bunch of our recruiting territories. I work with Southwest Iowa. Um, I also recruit students from Johnston and the Ankeny schools here in the Metro. And I work with a lot of our out-of-state first-year students as well. Jace, do you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, um, my name is Jace. I'm also a, a freshman admissions counselor. I work primarily with students from Wisconsin, Illinois, and then the Eastern side of Iowa. Nick and Michelle, would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Sure. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm Nick Mitchell. I'm the wrestling coach here at Grandview. I've uh, been here as my 13th year. And I'm Michelle Prongi, and I'm the athletic success coordinator, and it is also my 13th year. Very cool. Shay and Jacob, do you guys want to introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about yourselves? Yeah, so my name's Jacob. Uh, I'm a sophomore here at campus. Uh, I'm from Ogden, Iowa. Uh, I study sports management. I'm also on the baseball team. My name is Shay. I'm a sophomore here. I'm studying kinesiology. I'm from Sioux City, Iowa, and I'm a women's wrestler. Awesome, thanks. Jace has dropped um, some links in our chat to everyone. Um, we have the links for visiting. So we are doing in-person visits. If you are able and um, wanting to visit campus, you are absolutely welcome to do that. Um, we can have you meet with faculty. We can have you meet with um, coaches if they're available. Um, and then also admissions and head out on a tour um, with our students. We also have the application or online application link that's there. Um, and that is for seniors. So if you have not applied, um, you can follow the link after we're done today and you can apply. It is free to apply online. We also have our information sheet. So if you are um, a freshman, sophomore, or junior in high school, you can fill out an online information sheet to give your information to Grandview um, so we can stay in, in touch with you. Um, and then the very last link is our admission staff. So besides Jace and I, there are a couple of other admissions uh, counselors that help through the admissions process. If you are looking for someone, if Jace or I didn't mention um, you, your area that you live in, um, if we did not mention that one, you can hop on that website and see exactly who you will be working with through the admissions process. So um, first, we want to kind of give you some information um, about all of Grandview's athletics. Um, and then we are going to be um, taking a bunch of questions and asking all of our little panelists here um, to help answer some questions about Grandview and our athletic programs. Um, if you have questions, please message. Um, you can send those through the chat function to either Jace or I. Um, and we would be happy to answer those questions um, and you can send them anonymously through um, those chat functions just if you message specifically Jace or I. All right, so we have, um, I am screen sharing all of our different athletic programs that Grandview offers. Um, we have a bunch of different, obviously specific to men and women's um, and then we do have some, some co-ed programs as well. Um, we do have a specific website for our athletic programs, which is gvvikings.com. You can see all of the different programs, um, the rosters, the schedules, um, and all of them also have a little recruit me section with on, within the um, Grandview website. So here's kind of where we're going to start. I'm going to have um, Coach Mitchell talk a little bit about um, the NAIA and a little bit about the Heart of America Conference, etc., um, while we're waiting for some of those questions. Yeah, so um, I would say I really have no idea how much any of you guys know about the NAI, um, but typically when people ask me, you know, what, how would we compare to, um, you know, some of the other divisions you might be familiar with, like Division Three, Division Two, and the NCAA, um, usually I say we're, we're kind of a good combination of probably Division Three and Division Two. Um, we're really similar to the Division Three schools academically, uh, just because part, partially because of our, our class sizes, um, you know, the, the number of students on campus, 
probably um, the, the importance that we put on academics. And then I'd say we're really similar to the Division II schools when it comes to athletics, um, just because we have the ability to give athletic scholarships. Um, so we, a lot of times, draw student athletes who are really a good combination of, you know, they, they want to be um, really successful in the classroom, but at the same time, their athletics and their sports are really important to them also. So that's probably would be my best, um, easiest way to describe, you know, kind of what, what what would, um, how would you compare to those schools? And then our conference, the Heart of America, um, mostly Iowa, um, Missouri schools, I think, and some Kansas schools. Um, so uh, it's, it's, the nice thing is we don't have to travel a ton, um, you know, as far as our competitions go. Um, we're, we're pretty centrally located. So uh, it's, a, it's a really strong conference athletically. Um, you know, you look at most of the sports, um, there's, national champions, all Americans, team champions that come out of our conference all the time. So for us, um, it's, we've been on the, in the conference now for, I don't know, maybe Michelle knows, maybe six, six years, five years, something like that. Yeah. yeah, we were in a different conference before and it's been a huge upgrade for us. I mean, we, we, we love this conference and um, it's just, it's one of those, it's tougher conference than we used to be in, but I think athletically we like that because it just gives more clout to our conference. And, and we know that when it comes to, if there's ever at large bids, um, our conference is always looked at favorably because people know how competitive it is. So yeah, let me know if you guys have other questions too. I can keep talking, I'm pretty good at that. Great, and Jacob and Shay, can you guys talk a little bit about what it's like to be an athlete at Grandview? Uh, yeah, so me, uh, being on the baseball team, we only have like a spring season uh, opposed to maybe like basketball players who play both seasons kind of uh, switching semesters. Uh, the way I think of it is like class-wise, I load up my schedules in the fall when we don't have a season because uh, it's much easier to do stuff like or be focused on stuff when you're not like playing, obviously. Uh, but being in the spring, we were traveling a lot last year before we got sent home. Uh, due to COVID. Uh, we were traveling a lot, so um, kind of school is kind of a little difficult at a time, but then there's always like resources around to help. Uh, you can go talk to Michelle, you can go talk to tutors, you can talk to really anyone to um, get help on kind of school stuff. So the professors definitely make it easier for you because uh, 80% of the campus is athletes. So you're not the only one um, that could be struggling at a certain time of the school year. So then being on, um, so I'm on the women's wrestling team, so our season kind of lasts all year, basically. Um, so I, I think it's kind of motivating when it comes to schoolwork because it helps you keep your grades up all the time, you know, because you want to be eligible. So it kind of, you have something that's going on throughout the day. So it's pushing you to, uh, you know, wake up in the morning, to get your homework done, go to class, and then, you know, you go to practice and stuff. Um, and then along with that, your professors, because we travel a lot, so our professors um, are really good about working with your schedule as, like you, as long as you let them know ahead of time um, what's going on and helping you um, get the right opportunities if you are struggling, so. Great, and Jacob kind of mentioned uh, Michelle helping with some of the the difficulties of being a student. Michelle, can you talk a little bit about your role um, and how you um, help all of our athletes? Sure. As I stated, my title is Athletic Success Coordinator and it encompasses a lot. Um, the main thing being athletic eligibility. Um, you saw the screen earlier of all of our teams. We have 26 teams and close to 800 athletes. So before a student athlete can um, participate in his or her sport, they have to go through a process to become and be deemed eligible to compete. So all first time athletes at the NAIA, whether you're a freshman or a transfer, go through a clearinghouse similar to what NCAA has. Um, you'll go to the play an AIA website, create a profile, send in all of your high school transcripts, your ACT or SAT scores, 
And um, in order to be eligible as a freshman, you have to meet two out of three entering requirements. Those are a 2.0 cumulative grade point average, uh, 18 on the ACT, um, and 860 on the SAT, or be in the top 50% of your class. So two out of the three of those requirements um, are what get you an eligible determination. Um, sometimes we have high schools, it's more common than it used to be to not have that class rank. Um, if that's the case, you have to meet those two scores based off of the ACT or SAT score and the GPA. Now, NCAA is moving toward not counting um, that ACT or SAT score anymore. And I feel like NAIA will eventually follow that. So rules may change as we head down the road, but for now, um, as an incoming freshman in fall of 21, that still is what stands. The rest of my position entails just being a liaison on campus between academics and athletics. So if students are having difficulty in the classroom and need a tutor, I can help you um, get hooked up with that, whether it's math lab, um, the writing center, or individualized tutors for different course subjects. Um, we have study tables that our assistant coaches right now are kind of taking the realm with uh, since we don't have a room and with COVID, it's kind of weird. We don't have um, computers accessible other than in the library. But otherwise, it's just being kind of that voice for the student athlete when you need something in the classroom. Um, just to give student athletes the best chance to be as successful in their academic courses as they are in their sports. Awesome. Obviously, you do a ton, Michelle, um, and I think you were definitely uh, all of our athletes know who you are, and they um, they use your your services a lot, which is something that's um, specific to Grandview and really cool that we can offer that to our athlete our athletes. So um, we are going to open it up for some questions, um, and you can, like I said, you can shoot Jace or I. Um, these messages, and then we will kind of ask away and help answer them. Um, you can do that via the chat function. Um, I did get a question um, um, for one of our athletes um, about knowing, um, like, how to get recruited at Grandview. What is the secret to be recruited? Um, I'll have the the Students talk, Jacob and Shay, you guys can talk about your recruiting process. Um, and then Coach Mitchell, I'll have you touch base too on, on how students get recruited into Grandview. All right, so my recruiting process was a little different. Um, I met Coach Crinzy at a wrestling tournament um, and I didn't even know Grandview had women's wrestling. And so that's how I learned that it was here. And then, um, you know, I came to a practice here and I went on tour and got to see all the um, wrestling rooms and um, talk to coaches and uh, meet uh, the faculty here. Um, I know um, that we have different social medias too for women's wrestling that if you Um, our coaches uh, will get your contact information. There's also um, recruiting forms on um, the Grandview Wrestling page too. Your turn. Yeah, so during my recruiting process uh, for baseball, uh, we do a lot of showcase kind of things uh, where you go to these different events, uh, kind of show what you, uh, how you play, uh, throwing wise, fielding wise, hitting wise, stuff like that. Uh, but then, so I was just going through my summer season and I just randomly out of the blue gotten a text uh, from Coach Brinker my junior year and he said he had seen me play and stuff like that. He's just heard of me. Uh, he came to watch me play one day and then I took a visit the next week and then here I am. 
So that was kind of how, how that went for me. So I'd say um, from a coach's perspective, uh, you know, if you're interested in Grandview, if you're interested in playing sports here and you haven't heard from us, uh, don't always take that as we're not interested. So hit us up, you know, and I, you guys are all, I'm assuming pretty smart. So um, find a way, you know, whether you, it's through our social media, get on the webpage. We actually do check our emails, unlike most of you. So you can email us. Um, just, you know, don't be afraid to reach out, you know, and, and the other thing is, even if you set up a visit, uh, if you decide to come on a visit, if a coach isn't available that day, um, reach out, you know, and let us know that you visited and we can talk. Um, I know sometimes it, everyone's situation is different, you know, and even if, even if, if sometimes you think you're, you've been successful and you wonder why you haven't been recruited, reach out, you know, and, and, and let us know you're interested. If you're not, you know, sometimes, been student athletes who were afraid they maybe weren't good enough to, to play here at Grandview. Um, again, reach out, you know, and, and I don't, we don't have a lot of sports that have cuts. Uh, we have teams that have freshman teams and JV teams. And, um, you know, most of us, I'd say our mindset is just come in and get better and, and uh, you, you have the opportunity. So just, let us know, you know, and most of us coaches were used to uh, with athletes on campus. It's, we all enjoy doing that. So, um, communicate with us and, and we'll make sure to, that we get a chance to, to let you know, you know, what, if, when a good time would be to come visit and check out campus. Absolutely. Um, and I've always said to the students that come in and ask me that question um, in our admissions presentation, um, I always tell them that coach can't see every single person in the state or the country. They, you know, it, reaching out to the coaches is always a huge help um, because they just don't physically have the ability to see everybody. So um, if you're interested in Grandview, they will definitely take time to chat with you. So um, I've had a couple questions about men's volleyball. Um, when the men's volleyball season is, um, the season for men's volleyball runs January through April with the championships in April. Um, and then another question that kind of piggybacked off of that, um, but it could be for any any um, sport is that when filling out the Recruit Me page on the website, their athlete has only um, played for their high school team for one year, so he doesn't have a lot of stats to include. Um, that is okay if you've played club or you've been involved with some other club things. Um, you can include those stats versus the high school stats. Um, for example, men's volleyball is not a high school sport here in Iowa. Um, but there are some club teams that they can play on. So you can include stats from your club program um, or any stats you have. Um, and you can always, when you, when you chat with a coach, you can always um, explain yourself as well. So yes, go ahead and fill out the recruit me form regardless. Put as much statistics as you can in there. Um, I just got a question about picking out a roommate. So Shay and Jacob, do you guys want to talk about your guys' experience? Like did coach help you with that? Or did you do the random roommate or the social media pages? Um, so when I signed, there was a few girls that I wrestled with from Iowa that were going here. So I know I chose to go with um, one of the girls that I knew before. Um, I know our coach, he tends to try to get all of our girls to be roomed together. Um, so I know he reaches out and says that. Um, so for my roommate, uh, when I was coming into Grandview, um, I had uh, one of my friends from a rival school of mine in high school that uh, we ended up being roommates freshman year. And we were supposed to live in Nielsen, which is one of the um, freshman dorms here. And two days before we moved in, we got switched to Langrock. Um, <laughs> so we got matched up with two other randoms that we had no idea who they were. And now we're still roommates now. So uh, we got mixed up with other baseball players. So that's kind of how that played out. Yeah, I'd say most, uh, most of the coaches try to get their athletes to live with other athletes. And so if you know somebody that's coming and you want to live with them and you put each other's name down, it makes it really easy. Um, if you don't know somebody, um, then let your coach know. And, and most of us, we, we line up. Um, 
our athletes to live together, just so we know it's somebody that's on the same page, same type of schedule, somebody that isn't going to keep you up too late at night. So um, we just, and, and throughout the recruiting process, we get to know the athletes pretty well. And so usually we have a pretty good idea of who a good connection would be. And, and of course we, you know, we ask you guys to, you know, if there's somebody that you know that you want to live with. So usually works out pretty, pretty well. <clears throat> hey, I did see this question on here that I think it was Cassie that asked about when does an offer get made after the FAFSA has been completed? So that's a good question because it, it's, it's pretty, it's probably different per sport just based on when most people in that sport decide to commit. But I would say like, Number one, um, you know, when your FAFSA is submitted and, and you know if you're going to qualify for Pell Grant or Iowa Tuition Grant or, or if you're not going to, talk to your coach in your sport here at Grandview and ask them if they've seen it, you know, if, they're, you know, if there's going to be any kind of money available. And I know it's, it's always a hard thing to talk about money with coaches, but we expect it, you know, and it just – and I tell students this too, like even if you're looking at other schools, it's okay to ask about money just – just don't be a jerk about it. You know, just, you can just say like, Hey, I'm, I'm getting close to making a decision. Um, if I decide to come here, do you know if there'd be any scholarship money available for me? Um, and, and, and then you're going to get a, a good idea of how interested schools are in you. And so, um, you know, if you're, if you're getting pressure from other schools to make a decision and you want to see what money looks like here, let the coach here know that too. And then most of them will, will try to get something together for you sooner than later. I know that uh, for this year, um, people are just getting their FAFSA submitted and, and we just set tuition for the following year. And so sometimes, you know, we even do estimates just to give you an idea, you know, as you're trying to figure out, you know, what you're looking at. So just communicate that with your coaches and, and let them know, um, you know, and, and I guess another thing I would tell you is most of us, we try not to give out offers um, you know, it's right now it's October. Well, if an, uh, an athlete tells me they're not going to decide until March, I'm probably not going to give them an offer right now because scholarship money is going to change between now and March. And obviously for most of us, um, money gets smaller as the year goes on. And, and that, you know, that, that shouldn't be pressure to decide, but just understand if money is important to you and, and you feel really good about Grandview, then talk to your coach and see if you can get that offer together so that you can commit and just tell people you're coming to Grandview next year. Awesome. Coach Mitchell, I have um, a specific question for you. What are the three top characteristics you are looking for in wrestlers? Oh, man. Um, so, well, man, I, you guys are going to put me on the spot here. I'm going to talk for like a half hour. So I'll try to keep this short. Um, <laughs> this is the this is thing we talk about with our team. Um, and this is wrestling specific a little bit, but I want someone who's consistent, someone who's reliable, and someone who's tough. And I would say that that transcends pretty much all sports, meaning consistency means we want to know respect when you compete. We want to know um, that you can hold it together mentally, that you're, you're going to be the same person every time you compete. You're not going to let outside factors have a huge influence on you. Um, it's not – I didn't say win consistently. We just have to, you have to perform consistently, you know, every time you compete. So that's part of it. Reliable. A lot of that's the outside factors, meaning you have to be eligible. We, we got to know you're going to show up to class. We got to know you're going to stay out of trouble. We got to know that you're going to be a good teammate. We got to know that you're going to make the people around you better. Um, and then tough, it, tough can be every sport. I, I know the wrestling is maybe looked at, but I saw some of these, you girls were asking about the dance team. Dance is tough. You got to be tough. Like you're going to have to perform injured at some point. You're going to have to, you're going to be sick someday. Like it, it doesn't matter. Like, can you be tough through that situation or not? Um, you're going to have tough things going on in your life. You know, you're in college for four or five years. You're going to have some kind of adversity. You're going to have um, so a family problem. Your dog might die. Your girlfriend or boyfriend dumps you. It's too bad. Be tough. So it's, you have to, you have to be able to get through all that. So that's that's me specific. Can consistent, reliable, and tough. If you can be, you can be successful. Awesome, thank you. And I had a question, Jacob. I'm going to have you touch on um, asking about how to get invited to showcase events. You talked about attending a couple of those in high school. Yeah. So um, there's different ones. So we have our own here at Grandview. 
that uh, Coach Forty and uh, Brinker put on, um, just called our Viking Showcase. If you go onto the baseball page, um, I think there's a link to it. There was from last year, and I know uh, we just had it uh, about a couple months ago. So I know when the year comes around next year, um, they'll have it again. Flyers will be coming out, stuff like that. Um, but other showcases, such as like they're called PBR events, um, Prep Baseball Report. So you just look up PBR and it'll show different sites and where the stuff is. Uh, you just pay the money if you want to be just a pitcher. Uh, this is kind of baseball specific, but uh, kind of if you just want to do fielding parts, hitting parts, uh, pitching parts, uh, that's an awesome way to get yourself out there, especially um, to some of the smaller colleges in Iowa, such as Grandview, um, junior colleges, stuff like that, uh, because they're in Iowa mo mainly. Um, so I think they're just great opportunities uh, to get yourself out there, get exposed. Um, that's the best part. Um, kind of the easiest way of going through the recruiting process is getting yourself out there the most that you can uh, so more people get to see you. Um, and then you can just start making contacts with people, and um, it makes your life a whole lot easier, uh, in my opinion. I just got another question, and Jacob and Shay, this one's for you. Someone was asking, can athletes work on campus? So since you guys are working, do you guys want to take that? Yeah, so there's uh, like two types of jobs you can get on campus. Um, there's just like the work study job, which is like can range anywhere from like working in the cafeteria to um, event managing. Event managing. Um, or you could do a student leadership job, which is what me and Jacob do. Um, our student leadership job is Team GV, so we uh, give campus tours and work in the admissions office. Um, there's also a few other ones too. Yeah, so I'm also uh, involved in View Crew. So View Crew is when I help with all the freshman orientations in the summertime. Uh, the first weekend of school, we have this thing called Welcome Weekend, where we do a bunch of activities with incoming freshmen, um, kind of get yourselves out there, stuff like that. Um, so all the student leadership jobs on campus are also paid positions mm -hmm. um, to go along with that. So you have to go through student leadership training. We have a retreat that we also did, and you get trained in every job that you have. And there are mm -hmm. a ton of student leadership opportunities. Um, just a bunch of different kind of things that different clubs put on, like rec does activities. Um, there's campus fellowship for religious um, people uh, like Team GV, View Crew. There's a bunch of different opportunities on campus for work, so. I would uh, I'd throw in too that just because of our location, uh, it's pretty easy to get jobs off campus. I mean, I've, a handful of guys that um, work with off-campus jobs too and we're just there's so many I mean being in Des Moines uh, there's so many opportunities just close by and, and a lot of a lot of places they know you're in college they know you're an athlete they'll work around your schedule so it's, we're pretty fortunate there. And kind of piggybacking off of that Nick we do a lot of internships with a lot of our majors um, and internships are required for almost every single major at Grandview. Um, and being in the Des Moines area, that's a huge help on internships. And um, they're willing, obviously, to work around your athletic schedule as well. Um, if you need to, you can always do internships in the summer um, or in your off season too. So that's something that kind of piggybacks off of that work study. Um, speaking on out of um, out of state population. So normally um, they're asking how many out of state students that we have. We do have um, a handful of students every year coming in from out of state. I would say just looking at our first year population from last year, um, we probably had 10 to 15 percent of our incoming class last um, this this August um, as out of state population. Um, that also would include some international students. We do have some international students on some of our um, athletic teams as well. So anywhere I would say 10 to maybe even up to 18% on some years um, for those in our out of state first year incoming class. Um, we have a question and maybe um, Michelle, you can chat on this too. Are there any majors that conflict with athletics? Oh boy. <laughs> I, 
I would say any major probably could potentially conflict. It's all um, in how you manage your time, manage your schedules. Um, communication is probably the most important thing regardless of what major you're in. And, you know, nursing is probably one of our more difficult, but we have had tons of student athletes be successful in that. And they may go through some bumps in the road in the beginning, but once they're able to show that they're committed to both and can be successful at both, um, it's really a neat thing to see them be able to get through it because there is such a rigor with all the clinicals that are required, but it also takes communication with their academic advisors when you do your plan, when you do your course plan. And when you come in as a freshman, um, you will have a what's called a GV complete advisor who is there for a financial aspect, but is also there to help you kind of plan your four years out. So you know exactly um, if you know what major that you are going into, you're going to plan out four years, five years, whatever it's gonna take. So you know exactly what that's going to look like. So um, I would just say the communication part is what makes it or breaks it. And they have to keep those lines of communication open as they go through anyways. So um, I know we do have nursing is our largest major and we do have a lot of our athletes go through that nursing program. Um, and so keeping your schedule, keeping a planner, keeping yourself um, as on task as possible is a huge part of, of being successful in both the, the nursing program as well as um, athletics. So um, we do have another question. Um, and I know Nick, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but what is the best way to reach coaches? Yeah, so um, I would say just check our social media. Um, you can email us. If you get on the, uh, the Grandview Athletic website, um, that's a easy way to find our email addresses. I think most of them, even phone numbers are, are posted on there. So um, any of that, you know, and if for some reason, if you reach out to a head coach and you don't hear back, hit an assistant coach up too. I mean, we're, and you can, you can call admissions too, and um, they'll help you get in touch with us. We, we get calls from admissions lots of times about student athletes that are interested. So that's all a good ways to track us down. I have another question about students graduating in four years. Um, Michelle Prongy touched on this briefly, but we have a program that's called GV Complete that looks at your four year, your whole degree of what it costs you to attend Grandview. So not, not only just year by year, but what it is gonna cost you to get that nursing degree or the business degree, et cetera. Um, it's an awesome program. It's specific to Grandview. The first part of it is that financial key of it. That second part is the academic plan. So we actually put together a four-year plan of study for our students. So that is done at the beginning of your first year at Grandview. So that freshman year at Grandview, you would be putting together a four-year plan of study, mapping out exactly what classes you are taking every single semester, um, and kind of mapping it out for that specific major, which proves that the student can graduate within four years. Um, so it kind of puts the um, puts it in puts the student in the driver's seat of you know making sure they are passing their biology class before they go on to their chemistry class, et cetera. So it kind of maps it all out for you, proves that you can graduate in four years. If um, for some reason you want to change a major or add a major or a minor or anything like that, you have that completion coach to help kind of go through that plan of study for you. Um, and revise it and tell you, okay, is it still gonna be four years? Um, are you able to take maybe an extra class here or there and you can still get out in four years? Um, so it's definitely possible for our students to graduate in four years. Um, those students that do not graduate in four years are either maybe an athlete that redshirts, 
um, and is wanting to um, or taking a um, a year of red shirt uh, eligibility or if they are changing majors or double majoring or anything like that. That's a good question though. I'd say too, we, we have a lot more athletes now that with our master's programs, if you come in with credits, um, we, we have athletes that are graduating some in four years and some, if they do spread it out to five years, they're leaving here with their master's. So uh, just last year, we had a, a guy on our team that graduated. He came in with a bunch of credits. He graduated in three and a half years, finished up his master's in the remaining year and a half. Um, so he left here on scholarship the whole time, got his master's in five years. So if you, if, if you have credits coming in with you, take advantage of that too. Um, another question about majors. What are the most popular majors at Grandview? Um, with our nursing being the largest, obviously that's um, we something we are very well known for. We have a BSN nursing program, so four-year nursing degree. Um, and then we do have business as our second largest major. We've got everything from sports management to accounting to business administration. Um, some of the other ones that have really grown in the past are our, our biology program. We have a bachelor's of science and a bachelor's, bachelor's of arts in um, biology. Um, a lot of our students go on for pre-professional, so like a pre-med, pre-dentistry, that type of thing. Um, another one that is pretty big at Grandview is our education um, and our arts. We have a great graphic design program as well. So those are kind of the handful of, of majors, but we've got everything from music to um, game design. So lots of different majors at Grandview. Oh, the, the GV Complete program is the one that maps out your financial aspect as well as the academic aspect, the four-year plans. You'll hear a lot about that if you are a senior. Um, that's something that we touch on um, almost every time you're at Grandview. It doesn't look like I have any new questions, Tina. Okay, the last one, I just got one more. Um, I have one question for everybody at the end, but if you have any other questions, please get them submitted to either Jace or I. Um, the last question I just received was, are we on a semester or a block schedule? We are currently on um, a semester schedule. I would like Jacob and Shay to talk a little bit about the high flex, um, how we are currently doing um, our classes. Okay, so it kind of depends on the class. Um, I know for like a lot of the classes where we're in lecture halls and everything, we're able to go in person because it's a big enough classroom to where we can stay socially distanced. Um, you do have to wear a mask to class and then you're able to go. Um, for some of the other classes where we're in a smaller classroom, you get assigned a day where that's your in-person day. So like if you have the class Tuesday, Thursday, um, Tuesday would be your in-person day, and then the other day you would Zoom in. Um, but you also have the option to Zoom into all your classes. Um, and when you Zoom in, you can either Zoom in during the class time um, and treat it as like a normal class, or you can Zoom in asynchronously. So um, whenever you want, just watching the class videos, and then there's like some extra um, homework assignments that go with that. Awesome, thank you. <clears throat> okay, my last question, and this is for everyone here on our panel. Um, we can start with Nick. We'll put you on the spot. Nick, your favorite thing about coaching at Grandview? Winning. All right, next. <laughs> <laughs> Easy answer. Yeah. No, I would say, uh, and that is, I mean, obviously we'd like to win here, but um, it's, it's, the coaches and the athletes here know um, what that means, you know, to, to win uh, within your sport, you have to live in a certain way. And, and it's fun. It's been really fun to see how campus has changed. Um, just the, when I talk about campus, not just the, um, the, the bricks and mortar and the, you know, the buildings, but 
like how the culture has changed on campus. Like um, winning in a championship culture at Grandview is just the expectation. I mean, it's, and it's contagious, you know, and, and you see, you hear about how successful we are in each sport. And, and I really think like the athletes see what the other athletes are doing. The coaches see what the other coaches are doing. Uh, we feed off, the, off each other. And so it really is fun being part of a championship culture here at Grandview. And it's, it's something that's going to stick with you the rest of your life. It's not just the winning part, but it's who you are. It's who you become while you're here. And um, to us, that really is the most important thing. It's about um, how you're going to live your life for forever when, once you leave this place. So it is, man, it's, it's fun to be part of. Awesome. Thank you. I was talking to our sports information director a couple of weeks ago, and I was looking for a fun fact that we could share on one of our other um, one of our other events. And she told me that we have won 13 national championships in the last 10 years. So that's kind of a cool fun fact. Nick, how many have you been a part of? There you go. He's got, he's got way over half of them. So, all right, Michelle, what is one more? We get it. We'll get it. All right. Pro, uh, Michelle Prongy, what is your favorite thing about Grandview? I think my favorite thing is just the family atmosphere. And um, I'm a Grandview grad. I was a student athlete. I played softball here. And although a lot of physical changes have taken place since I was in college, um, that same family feeling of why I chose here as a student um, are still here today as a staff member. and. Um, the athletic department is awesome. Everyone's on the same page. Um, as far as you're a student before you're an athlete, the athlete part comes as a privilege. Um, there's not a very high percentage that get to continue to come to college and compete. And um, if you're lucky enough to be one of those, um, like Nick said, we're here to help you become a successful adult and you're going to be that a lot longer than what you're going to compete in your sport. Awesome, very true. All right, Jacob and Shay, can you tell us what the favorite, your favorite part about Grandview is and about being on um, the athletic programs? Yeah, so <laughs> my favorite part, I would say, uh, would be kind of like being able to gel with all the other athletes on campus. Um, so kind of the unique thing this year that's different because of the COVID stuff was lifting um, because we had couldn't do teams because our teams are too big. So we had to sign up for different sessions and with signing up for different sessions, which are an hour block, um, that means you're not going to get with all baseball players. You're not going to get with all football players. You're going to have a mix of different people. Uh, so in my lifting, I have like five basketball players, men's basketball players. I have women's basketball players, football players, wrestlers. So it's kind of like a time, you know, you're doing your lift, you're getting your, uh, your work done for the day, but you're also gelling with all these other kids who are doing similar stuff to you, maybe different, um, different concepts, different ways of doing it. But it's kind of a time just to like go away from, oh, I'm just a baseball player here and just facing the fact that you're an athlete here at Grandview and that all these other kids are athletes just playing different sports with different concepts and you're kind of all just doing the same thing so all right so kind of tying into that my favorite thing about Greenview is um how easy it is like you know the family feel and the championship lifestyle all combined into one um we're all athletes on campus and so it's really easy we all understand that um we have practice and you know we put in that extra work and we all want the certain lifestyle that we have to um, live to be a good athlete and so making friends with all these other athletes whether it's football players volleyball players um, softball wrestlers um, we all live that same lifestyle so it's easy to um, you know have friends outside of that same group like no one's going to get mad at you for going in and getting an extra practice in because they're doing the same thing um, and they we just really have that family vibe so it's kind of nice um Awesome, thank you guys very much. All right, well, we will stay on here and if anyone has any specific questions, you guys can 
uh, message me. I can put you guys in breakout rooms with any of our students or uh, Michelle or Nick, uh, if you guys, or Jace, if you guys want to stick around, you are more than welcome to. Um, I'm going to go ahead. 